Hi, name. my name is Luani Morel. I'm Director of Engineering Education Innovation at HP Labs in um, Hewlett Packard. To me, the most in exciting innovations that in engineering education in, that have uh, occurred in the past are those that pertain to the bridging the gap between how we teach engineering and how engineering is practiced. I think um, our curriculum, our, our student experiences can be significantly enhanced by experiencing engineering at an early stage in the programs, just as medicine and other, and other professions do. Um, everyone benefits from this, especially the students and those who employ our students and, and the future of, of this nation. So I think um, bridging the gap and making programs more um, um, active in, 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 in experiences for students that have to do with the profession itself, the engineering professor, profession design, uh, working in teams, um, um, design projects ac across across the globe, you know, in, in, in virtual teams, uh, just as engineering is practiced nowadays. Um, I think that will that those programs I think can be used as a benchmark in um, in replicating these innovations um, across the world. Actually, the, the thing that we mostly need is is faculty awareness of of this need. I think. Um, faculty should be aware of the need of developing this engineer that hits the ground running and is ready to innovate and, and solve problems not only at a local scale but also at a global scale. I'm a strong believer of, of faculty being engineers and practicing engineering uh, themselves. Not uh, The fact is that 95% or so of, our, of the students we have in our classrooms today will not be become PhDs and will not be researchers themselves. They will be engineers in the field and uh, thus solving engineering problems. Um, people do what they're asked to do so if, and they're rewarded for. So if, if faculty are rewarded for research and innovation, well that's great, but I think faculty should also, uh, the scholarship of teaching and learning should be recognized as such as well. So I think there's a role in, of each stakeholder in this process. I think governments, especially uh, you know, the, the, the science and technology funding agencies, NIH, NSF, uh, NASA, should, um, make a, should, should make an effort or could make an effort to um, assign more funding or allocate more funding for engineering education research and enhancing the learning and teaching experience. That's for one side. This is the government side because um, people follow the money. So if there's money in engineering education research and in retraining or, or revamping our curriculum, or re innovating our curricula, then we'll, they will go for it. Second, um, academia has a role, an important role. Deans have to come together and recognize as a group that this is a valuable, um, a valuable thing to do. Um, if you recognize the, scholars, the scholarship of teaching and you um, give a, a high value to it, then um, faculty will, will deliver in that area. And finally, industry and the private sector, I think we have a role as companies and external stakeholders of education to um, help establish policy and, and, and help bring the voice of the customer or, or the employers of students, of graduates, and, and making, them, uh, making everybody aware how important it is to um, have a, an engineer who possess the skill, not only the knowledge, but also the skills and competencies needed in the workforce of today. Um, more and more you see uh, nations investing in science and technology and in, in innovation. I would like to see the U.S. lead in um, innovation in engineering education to develop a graduate that will significantly take this country to another level in science and technology.